Mai Tabasa, thank you so much for joining us for a special chat today. We have two amazing women from Malawi, Lynn and Zani, and we are going to talk about all things fashion futures. What is the future of fashion in Africa? Mai Tabasa, thank you so much for joining us. Tell me what's up, what's going on in Malawi? Mm. Malawi is good. We are trying to adjust and go digital because of everything that's happening in the world. Well, but you know, it's um, it's it's just gonna be a matter of perseverance and trying to adapt quickly. So a lot is happening, but there's a lot of restriction. But we move, we keep it pushing. <laughs> mm. Are you guys on lockdown by any chance? Um, I think everybody's trying their best to stay home as much as they can. Yeah. But in terms of the nation, you know, we, I think it was a matter of whether people would be able to survive in a lockdown. Right. So I think the, the country is just trying to be hopeful and trying to do what's best, you know, considering everything. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. You know, when you look at Africa, whose uh, majority in Africa are surviving in the informal sector. In fact, in Zimbabwe, we're almost uh -huh. 90 people who are living hand to mouth. Uh -huh. So when you impose exactly. something heavy as a lockdown, you're like really killing people. And I, I wonder exactly. what will kill people in Africa is hunger uh, and, you know, over uh -huh. COVID. It's it's very interesting exactly. time that really requires yeah. us to put our heads to the table and really think about mm -hmm. how to find solutions that are tailored for uh -huh. Africa. And this is what we are about to go into. Um, exactly. Tell me, Fanny, tell me about Malawi as in the Malawi creative sector. What's, what's going on there? What, what, how would you describe it if you had a minute or two to describe Malawi creative sector to someone and sell it to someone? What would you say? I think the best way to describe it, Chenetai, is talented. There <laughs> is so much talent in Malawi. And the talent is not just in the design aspect of things. It's in, you know, the storytelling. It's in the creativity that we're seeing in photography, with videographers, um, with bloggers. Everybody is in a space where they want to create. And yeah. every time we see somebody pushing the envelope and trying to do something that hasn't been done before, it's really refreshing and encouraging as a creator to look next to me and see another creative doing something so awesome. And I'm like, oh my God, that inspires me and it makes me want to push. So if I was going to sell Malawi yes, Creative please. Sector to sell your this just is, Think about this chat as Dragon's Den. Sell your country, sister mm -hmm. girl. Sell your country. Look, look in Malawi. Just, just search whatever talent, skill, creative, product you need and then search Malawi and you will find people and even if you don't find them you know online visibly because we're still catching up when it um, comes to branding ourselves the right way but yeah. if you have a conversation with a local you know we're, we're more than happy to point you in the direction of somebody that we feel you know is talented to perform whatever you what? need done so look at Malawi <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm already looking Malawi and I'm thinking at the soon, well, I don't actually have to fly to Malawi. I could figure out how, how I'm going to yeah. get there. But exactly. um, if I had to drop in Malawi like right now, where would you mm -hmm. take me? What is, what is touristy about Malawi? What is, um, what is definitive about Malawi? What, what gets you guys ticking? Drop dead, drop in Malawi right now. Chinesai is at the airport. Where would you take me? Yeah. Girl? Where would you take me? Everywhere, everywhere. Let me tell you, we are not caught the warm heart of Africa for no reason. Oh, God. Um, hold, on, would... hold on, hold on. Oh. What is this warm heart stuff? You are caught the you warm heart. Not... <laughs> I didn't know. That. I didn't know. That. Oh, the warm heart of the continent. And it's true. Like, our people. You know, the hearts are big, we're giving, there's life here. And I know you being in Zimbabwe, it's the same thing I observed during Fashion Futures, right? Yeah. There's yeah. so much going on in the country that could keep the people down, but the people are pushing. So if you landed in Malawi, we'd first go see my parents. <laughs> 
there goes the warm heart aspect of it. What? And then I will, and I will I will take you. Huh? Why am I going to go see warm heart first? You know, because again, um, with fashion futures created more than just you know a brand. It created connections that now family knows. If you come to my house and say this is Chennai, everybody, my aunties know you, my cousins <laughs> know you. <laughs> you know, and this is so, what yeah, we would go home first. <laughs> this is what it's about. This is what we do this for, right? And you know, when 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 Please. people. think about it when we talk about the warm heart of africa generally and the warm heart of uh, malawi we want to mm. realize that when we do this stuff it's about the connections okay. if there's anything exactly. that africans are good at it is yeah. connecting and just the human exactly. african no matter whether i go mm-hmm. to kenya and i'm I, i am in malawi or zambia or ethiopia there is something so warm and welcoming about all those places and i think that yep. is it that is mm-hmm. it. that is the t- girl, tell me you know what we we we, we could we could speak <laughs> you know this tell me okay. you know, okay. fashion, fashion futures for me uh-huh. um was such an intriguing concept and a, a great project because for me fashion is more than just fashion it is a way we express ourselves it is a it is a language that africa has in abundance because we have so much of this you know uh-huh. so much artistic uh-huh. so much luxury so much color um to express uh-huh. who we are So when I worked mm-hmm. on Fashion Futures in collaboration with British Council and Natal Media and a, a project that I'm very happy to continue over the length of time I was very mm-hmm. excited because it began to talk about the luxury that we are and just the other day mm-hmm. I was watching Made in a Made in Africa which all of you should watch by Tongoro mm-hmm. Studios a brand out yeah. of Dakar Senegal and one of the mm-hmm. things says in her a uh, documentary is luxury is not a price luxury is uh, an experience and africa uh, is rich in luxury and look at me yeah. look at me look, uh, look at me look at me tell uh, me what did fashion futures mean to you uh what did fashion futures mean to me you know i i want to answer this from a personal perspective yeah, it was an experience you know it was literally um feeling like you have entered an arena that you've never stepped into mm. so it was you know I, i i had been to other places in africa but i hadn't seen africa the way i saw africa with you with um lea with all the content creators and everybody who was on that project so it was expansion it was mind opening and it also took me out of my own creative box because for a long time i only saw myself one way so fashion futures was able to say hey toko like don't this is great that you started here it's great that you have your roots and your foundation is here but you are so much more than what you've been telling yourself that you are so mm. bringing it into that now um the luxury within africa i think is almost visible to everybody else but us <laughs> You know the thing the, <laughs> that's the, the thing we, go ahead girl you've just hit the, the, you've hit the nail there go go yeah. ahead yeah hammer it being able to to have one job and still you know be okay you know there's uh, a piece a, a being able to watch a sunset you know people we don't know that the rest of the world is missing a beautiful sunset so africa luxury wise everything is there but i think it's up to us to start to see the luxury within our own selves and within our own spaces i mean girl you have hit the nail on the head and hammered it into the wall and i just want to ask you say it's up to us to start seeing the luxury that is in africa but mm-hmm. how do we how do you think we start doing that when we did fashion futures right Um you guys came from your home country which was for you Malawi you traveled to Namibia uh-huh. where you had never been before uh-huh. 
to tell a story uh -huh. of the Namibian fashion, uh, fashion um, sector. And for us, it was mm -hmm. important for you to do that because we wanted a fresh lens when you were telling the uh -huh. story about a certain uh -huh. industry. So then after you uh -huh. came to Namibia, we all congregated in Zimbabwe to start unpacking uh -huh the things that all of you girls had uh, mm -hmm. been discovering. How do we mm -hmm. start unpacking that which is authentically African? How do we bring Africa to the world? Because you know what? It's not about one or two voices. It's about mm -hmm. everybody. Everybody needs to start mm -hmm. talking Africa for us to be on the map. Mm -hmm. How do you think we mm -hmm. can do that? How do we do that? I think we start by embracing our Africanness. Us as individuals, I think. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. You should have expected this, Zani. You should have expected this. So we start by. I, 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 <laughs> we start by um, embracing our I, Africanness. Yes. We start by we start by embracing ourselves and embracing what we feel is luxurious about our country, our fashion, you know, um, like the fashion sector in Malawi right now is budding. And I know I use the same word to describe the, the fashion sector in Namibia, but it's because if you were to look from the outside and yeah. then come at it with a lens of comparison, you might yeah. not see it. But when you're in it and you see the creative process and you see the resourcefulness and you see the you know, way these designers and bloggers are trying to make the most out of the little that we have, you have a different appreciation for it. So now yeah. if you say, I embrace this and I see this in this fashion creative and I think this is luxurious, then that is luxury. We have then owned our own, you know, story, our own narrative. Now when mm -hmm. the world comes to us, is what's great about Malawian fashion. We can describe it as being luxurious. We can point to designers that we feel are high end because we have embraced them as that. Word. And you know, it's 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 you know, it's really so important. I think even when you look at personal development, if you don't accept uh -huh. who you are at the core of uh -huh. you, you know, if you don't exactly. accept who you are, it's very difficult for you to develop no matter how much you invest in so no matter how much education you acquire no matter where you've lived in the world no matter how much money you have if you do not embrace who you are at the core you can never develop uh -huh. and that's the very uh -huh. element you're bringing to this discussion if africans uh -huh. me as shona uh -huh. zimbabwean uh -huh. do not start uh -huh. embracing that uh -huh. Uh -huh. you no, know, if uh -huh. I embrace that first, right, my language, my country, yeah. my people, then I would never be able to develop the continent. Do you think this is true? This is true, but also keeping in mind not to fall into the trap of a single story because Ooh. my mother already about that, you know. So not to say embracing Malawian or embracing African is one story but to really be willing to ha huh, why am i getting <laughs> sorry i was hearing the same chat from the room next door <laughs> <laughs> well this is what makes it magical go ahead girl go ahead <laughs> the point was not to get stuck in a single story because what is malawian to me and what malawian should look like let's not box ourselves while we're trying to embrace you know, let's give ourselves space to say, if you want to express yourself in that way, and it's not what I associate as being Malawian, I'm okay with, with that, because you're owning yourself. And by virtue of being Malawian, by virtue of producing in Malawi, then this is what we're accepting as ours, you know, so embracing, but not confining each other, you know, giving each other room to define ourselves in the process as well. This is this is the cherry, the cherry on top. Because I think what yeah. you have just talked about, I mean, we're, we're talking about a, a whole range of things, but one of them is because culture is not static, right? How I uh -huh. enjoy, how I experience Zimbabwe being Shana and being a Zimbabwean should uniquely be my perspective because that's the celebration of culture, right? And I remember uh -huh. seeing, um, 
a lecture the other day to some students in Stellenbosch and we were talking about commodifying mm. the African culture. And one of the questions mm. that comes up in that discussion is who owns culture, right? And mm. for uh -huh. instance, what Duma has done with the Tosa culture and he has created mm. a label with the Tosa culture who owns that? Whose intellectual property is that, right? And when you think about what the Senegalese designer Tongoro has done in Senegal, who owns that, right? But for me, at the core of that complicated questioning, is culture is not static. Culture is an experience, right? And it's an how experience. Exactly. How I experience culture is what is going to bring stories to the table. This is this Stories, exactly. the different eyes, the different experiences in one setting uh -huh. that we need to push uh -huh. out the danger of a single story. Um, absolutely so, amazing. That's what I love about fashion futures. I think, you know, you could have done fashion futures and kept us in our countries and that would have been, you know, great too because we would have told our stories, but then yeah. challenging someone who would have been to me for example namibia and then saying go tell a story about namibia it makes it you know broader you know that means when we speak africa now i know that even when i talk of africa i have to factor in what Bulawayo exposed me to what harare exposed me to what Hindu exposed me to and that's not a single story at it all is zani you've lived in new york city right um for oh. for a while and then you, you went from New York City and you moved back to Malawi. I uh -huh. want to know, um, when you look at all your experiences put together, you know, uh -huh. you've traveled the world, you have lived well around Africa. Uh -huh. what, is, what hope do you have for Africa? Uh -huh. Well, what I'll is, start with Malawi. What hope uh -huh. I have for Malawi specifically. Yeah. My hope for Malawi is that we can embrace ourselves. Um, I think it ties into the whole topic that I was talking about. But, um, you know, I don't want to even call it a hope because I already see it manifesting. Yeah. If you go like on, a, you know, the communities in Malawi, Twitter or, you know, Instagram, there yeah. is a community yeah. that in different spaces, Malawian creatives and lovers of creativity, fashion, beauty, we are all kind of embracing each other. Um, mm -hmm. So my hope is that we continue to do that. Um, like, let's just take fashion, for example. Last year alone, we had a beautiful events, great, well-patronized events, African Fashion Festival, um, Zuzu Fashion Week. We had fashion markets happening. We had, you know, so many different things. The Fashion Futures event alone was well patronized, well supported. So my hope is also me saying, I see that we're going in that direction and I hope we continue to do that, which is to embrace each other. And, you know, to really say, when you have that urge to buy fashion, you know, make it a conscious decision before you look elsewhere to look within. And even if you don't see it in Africa, I mean, in Malawi, look to your neighbor, look to Zimbabwe, you know, hit up Chenesai, you know, things like that. I think I would really, <laughs> yeah, I see Africa. <laughs> exactly. You know, I already need several pieces from you. <laughs> you know what? And this I like to put these problems out there. And this is a real problem that you've kind of, you're about to hint into. We are not uh. online. It's like everybody always asks me, why do I uh. not have an e-commerce site for Chenesai Studio Collection, right? Uh -huh. And uh. I'm ashamed to say, I just cannot afford it. And then most of uh. my clients cannot afford me to ship uh. their commodities out. So if, even if I had an e-commerce site, when uh, people buy from me, they cannot afford to actually pay for the shipment. How do we fix uh, this problem? Because I want genocide to be worn by Africa, but Africa cannot uh, access genocide. How do we fix uh, this? Fix this. Well, I, okay, off the top of my head, I feel like we can work around it because just looking in Malawi, we, we get, you know, once the world opens up again, you know, yeah. there's a cousin in America 
Africa who sends you things. There's a sister in South Africa who sends you things. You know, yeah. we can link up, be each other's distribution, you know, yeah. in a sense. You know, so if, if you know that there's movement happening, you know, why not? And then have the compassion for Chenesai to say, this item will reach me, you know, maybe in a month. Maybe it will reach me later. Ahead. You know, have that compassion for the creative and understand that we're working in very complex situations and the infrastructure here for business and e-commerce is very complicated so if the consumer really has that heart to support and you know it's compassionate with you at the same time you're partnering with other you know people in the countries to distribute maybe we can work around the cost of distribution look this is so important um Someone says here, also um, DHL and FedEx have courier services for SMEs. And I want to talk to you mm. like an SME, right? Who has tried all these mm. platforms, right? And I'm not even SME. I'm in micro, small enterprise. Mm. My pants, let's say my, I make a pair of pants for a client in America. And mm. um, the pants cost me $60 to make. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Production costs you know, finishing costs. For me to ship mm. the same pair of pants, realistically, mm. it could be $10, right? Mm. So my mm. pants end up arriving to my client for about $130, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just not practical. I do, mm. immediately, what I do like is what you've just proposed. You have said, mm -hmm. let's find other innovative ways. Like, let's courier, let's help mm -hmm. each other out. Um, but how do we sustain masses, numbers? Because, you know, it all boils down to how much you're selling, how many you're selling, when, how, and where. So how do we deal with that? How do we deal with that? Mm. That is, oh, <laughs> again, <laughs> off the top of my head. Innovation. Let's, let's actually innovate. And you know what? This, the thing is, I really feel like at this point where we are, we cannot have any industry separate from another. So just because we're trying to create and push in fashion doesn't mean you cannot go to logistics and go to the people there and say, hey, you work in logistics, but I'm a fashion creative. Your industry is slower compared to mine because you need to catch up with the fact that, you know, we can have all those kinds of conversations, but innovating and reaching across industries to say how can we problem solve together versus us just being um, close within our own industry. Hmm. And I like that. I, I like the cross-sector collaboration. I like working across mm -hmm. sectors. I like the, the whole notion of saying, how do we innovate collaboratively instead of trying to innovate mm -hmm. in little silos, like Chenta is thinking of solution mm -hmm. here, Dani is over here. Exactly. How do we collaborate? Yeah. I suppose maybe yeah. when you come talking about the hope that you have for Africa, it spins into mm -hmm. what I am hearing is it spins into how do we collaborate more, support each other more, mm -hmm. and how do we open this mm -hmm. platform where I am in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. and I'm speaking to someone mm -hmm. in Malawi and you're telling me what's happening mm -hmm. in Malawi and we're trying to figure out how do I get Chenesai to Malawi and how do I get Zani to Malawi? Right, right. Exactly, exactly. I like yeah. it. I, yeah. I, I I giving like the it. example of this this chat right now, the way that, you know, people from all over Africa have supported and shared this chat, you know, whether the people who shared it, you know, locally um, and in the fashion industry that have shared so that people can know we're having a discussion like this. I even had um, the Anaparod woman who is a Zimbabwean brand. You know, there's been a lot of sharing and embracing of the <laughs> fact that Malawi and Zimbabwe are talking. So it's happening already. We just have to keep at it. I, I'm, I'm a celebratory kind of person. We're going to do mm. a, a moment of celebration. We're going to just clap our hands and say, look, guys, for everybody on this chat, for everybody who shared, who made time, yeah. you know, yeah. I feel yeah. like we really need to sometimes take a step back and celebrate, you know, shout yeah. out to everyone who shared this chat and was sitting on this chat and was going to share exactly. this chat afterwards. tell you how I met Lynn. It's very important. The stories of the how is always important. So Lynn, um, uh, Lynn found
found me on Twitter. She sent me a message on Twitter and she says, look, sis, I want to highlight you about Fashion Futures project. Uh, I know you brought it to Malawi. You were instrumental in bringing Fashion Futures to Malawi. And I want to be a part of this movement. And I'm like, girl, where have you been? I have been <laughs> waiting to have a conversation about Fashion Futures. So, you know, me being a, a connector, quickly went to my email. Lynn, we can have this chat. I will introduce you to Madam Zani. Who yes! We just and Zani can help you through your journey, Fashion Futures in uh, Malawi. So this is how I met Lynn. I am excited yes. to meet a young aspiring designer who hails from Malawi, very well-traveled young lady. And can I just today, say something, by the way? Please say something, please. I was stalking you a year ago. I saw your picture. <laughs> You're wearing like a jumpsuit. I was like, this girl is lit. She's so beautiful <laughs> and you're so powerful. I was like, oh, wow, God. this girl is like amazing. I've got my phone. Make so it amazing. Me flash. <laughs> Honest to God. And then I saw that you're doing like fashion futures. And I was like, wow, what is this? Zani's essay was incredible. It was yes, it was. It, it was, was amazing. Yeah. Intellectual, academic, everything. And I was like, wow, hello, I want to be a part. <laughs> You know what? Um, first of all, I really want to say thank you so much for those kind words. I think I'm going to take a moment to just appreciate sisters celebrating each other. I think there's power in words. Yes. And I feel like um, we should do that more. We should compliment each other more. We should tell each other that we are okay. We are enough. We are beautiful. So for you, for you saying those kind words to me, thank you, sister. They go a long way. May we start something today that you, whoever is on this phone conversation, will go and compliment the next sister. Tell them how beautiful they are. Tell them how inspiring they are. Tell them how able they are. Because you know what? We are enough. I'm done I with the lecturing. I love you so much. I love I you for that. I am done with the lecturing. Tell me about I love Malawi. You. Tell me about Malawi. <laughs> Tell me about Malawi. You know what? love Malawi. Do you know what? I don't know if you know, but we were voted in 2018 as the happiest people in the world. Well, well, well. You know the, go, go, <laughs> Google voted us <laughs> the happiest people in the world. So we're really happy. And like Zani said, we are the warm heart of Africa. So mm. we are a great people, I guess. <laughs> That's amazing, you know. Um, what makes you, what, what makes Malawians happy? Tell me, what, what, what do you think in your space? What makes you guys so happy? Uh, I don't know what makes us so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say, uh, <laughs> I don't know what makes us so happy, but we are. I feel like we use the least that we have to create the most. We don't have so much because, of course, other people say, oh, you you are the fourth poorest country in the world but mm. we use what we have to make the most that's why we are so happy you could go to malawi you could be in a car and like mm. be traveling and you see all these kids and everyone's so happy and we are so happy and it's it's crazy because we should be miserable no, 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 no. You know what, Lin Linda? You've just actually talked into something. Less is more, yeah. hey? Happiness yeah. is not a price. Happiness is yeah. not a price point. Happiness is an experience. And I think, I think this notion that Africa is a sad continent because we are poor is yeah. so ill-conceived. Because I, in my personal space, um, with my children, and with my husband and the principles we're trying to teach our children is you don't find happiness in commodities, in luxury things. You find happiness in the time you spent with each other, with your mother, with your brother, with your grandmother and your grandfather. That is where you will find happiness. Not I love in that. finding new toy. So I love that. This is, and this is what we're teaching the children because we have become so materialistic at some point, we now keep throwing things at our children and forgetting that, no, no, no. 
Happiness needs to come from within. And me Absolutely. and my husband have a responsibility to cultivate that, that happiness in my children. Again, I am done with this lecture. <laughs> I am done. Tell me about fashion in Malawi. Tell me about fashion in Malawi. <laughs> fashion in Malawi I love what's going on in Malawi like I love Al Alexandria she's doing amazing things I love Mizu she's doing amazing things I love Lily Alfonso she's doing amazing things of course me hello <laughs> and people I feel like told me I was not enough they told me I was not good enough and I feel like do you know what I actually I am enough I am enough and Malawi is enough you know it is yeah, enough girl. no no we yes, are enough. Sir. so you tell me you tell me okay fine I know you have grown up in different places and you've lived in London for a while um Zani is the one who grew up in New York I spent uh, some time in um, good old Dallas, Texas. Shout yeah! out Dallas. <laughs> um, So now you thinking London, I know one of your aspirations is to move back home. Why would you live, why would you leave London to go to Malawi? Why would you do that? I want to know. Because I feel like there's a story to be told. Mm. A story to be told. We're Africans, and I feel like when you move to the West, people tell you, oh, you accent is shit, you are not great, you're this and you're this, and whatever the case. But I feel like, look at this wall. I look at this wall, and I'm so proud. I am proud to be Malawian. I'm proud. And I want to utilize the West. Hello? I want to <laughs> utilize Balenciaga, Givenchy, Gucci. I want to use you all. I look at your bestsellers and now think, what am I creating? That's what I want to do. Oh, bravo, girl. Bravo, 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 bravo. Because the whole idea is, um, you know, when you think about the idea of exposure and why we travel to be exposed, to experience different things, is because it's supposed to inspire how we end up packaging what we do. Right. Yeah. So if you go back to Malawi, right, what would you do? What would be the first thing you'd do for your fashion sector? I want to work with all the girls. I want to bring all the bloggers. I want to I want to talk to all the photographers, all the designers. I want to sit down because I feel like we don't even have like a fashion council. You know, Mzuzu Fashion Week is amazing. Uh, the Africa uh, thing is great, but I feel like I just want to sit down with everybody and be like, guys, let's do this. Let's mm -hmm. collaborate. Let's partner. I feel like sometimes people just look at people and they judge and there's so much, you know, jealousy. I don't want to go into that, but let's learn from each other. I'm a great stylist. I'm a great, you know, curator. Let's work together and let's do this. Like you were saying before with Zani about um, Made in Africa. We can do this. Girl, we hold on. Hold this. on. Hold on. Hold on. Moment, <laughs> of silence. Moment of silence. We can't drop made in Africa by <laughs> and not give a moment of silence. Moment of silence. Let's just breathe and accept <laughs> that the sister dropped a documentary that is spellbinding, that is compelling, mind blowing, class, 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 class. I said then, I said, girl, I have not even started. What have you just taught me here? Just Can I tell you something, though? You yeah. have started. I have been stalking you for a whole year, and I did not yeah. stalking you. Yeah. Hello? You know when you watch that documentary, you feel some type of way. You nice know, amazing. You feel, I felt some type of way when I watched Made in Africa, because... Do you know how beautiful she put it all together? And just the idea of telling an African story with so much luxury. I mean, stop it. I was just like, 
Girl, we are here. We have arrived. We, we have. have. Your time is now. It's time now. I feel like we need to. We need to come on. You know what I mean? I feel like sometimes we're so lazy and we're not working so hard. And we have to. It's our time. It's it, our time. I don't know. Guys, I see these comments that you have not watched Made in Africa. I w if anyone hasn't watched Made in Africa, come into my inbox. I will share the link with you. I am happy. Everyone who wants to tell the African story should learn. I think she has what she, she has set the bar here. She oh my god, she's she like has Beyonce. set the bar here. Be Beyonce is wearing her stuff. Hello, Naomi Campbell is wearing her stuff. Hello, Alicia is wearing her stuff. I mean, Burner Boy is on stage firing it up in her stuff. Hello? More of that. I am just saying we it's it's done. The time is Hello? now. Right. And so I feel like she's so humble. She's such a humble girl. She girl. Is. Girl. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say about Tomboro Studios. I I really, you know, I think in appreciation, there's so much going on. Even in our Do you have Zimbabwe. any of the pieces from her, by the way? I do not. God forbid. <laughs> bet, you know, I bet now they you can't even buy them. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I love mean, her. I really I love her. She amazing. inspires I, me uh, I, every I love day. Her too. But can I tell yeah, you something? I love her. Though? Can I tell you yeah. something? This is a true story. I was working for a company called Lalibella.com, and I was doing their PR. And they said to me, "Oh, you know, we want to get more Malawian designers in London, ABC." And I said, "Okay, I'm gonna try." And I contacted lots of like Malawian designers and they said, guys, let's get into this thing. Let's make this money. And no one, no one responded to my email. And for me, I feel like we need to do better. We need to do better. And that, they said to me, oh, why don't you? And I said, okay, okay I'm going to put together a collection. I said, okay, I'm going to illustrate something. And I did. And the deal fell through, which is really sad. But I cried. Why, why did you cry? Lynn? Lynn is breaking up a little bit, guys. Lynn, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Log back out and come back in. I'm with you. I'm gonna. So uh, we couldn't hear Lynn, so she's locked back out and she's gonna lock back in. We were talking about um, what we can do for Africa. She was telling me about a deal that she had secured for Malawian designers in London. And when she emailed the Malawian designers to send their product, she could not get them to sell their product. They didn't. So this is one of some of the problems that we have in, in the African creative sector. We have amazing talent, but I always say having skill alone is not a uh, business. We need to figure out how to build businesses from the skills that are existing in our sectors. So it's very exciting that she gives this example and she is back just like that. Hey girl. What hey girl. What up? What up? I okay. love you. <laughs> love you right back, all the way from Zimbabwe. Now Woo! tell me, you were telling me about this, um, the designer. You were telling me about um, trying to source a deal for your Malawian fellow colleagues, and it, di it didn't happen. So you're telling me now, what, what I am hearing is we're talking about systems and processes that are not working in our creative sectors. Tell me, in your wildest imaginations, how would you fix this? How would you I fix it? I want to work together. I feel like people just don't trust each other sometimes. And I feel like we have great product. Like Zani said, we're so talented. We have so much potential. Um, right. Oh my God. Like Malawi is the future. Future fashion. 
You know what I mean? Like I'm with it. Like, I'm with it. Yeah, I'm with it. Honest to God, I feel like we can do this, but we just have to. <laughs> I don't know. We just have to communicate, I guess, better, you know? I, I didn't understand why I would say, guys, this lady in London says she wants product. Right. She's right. going to pay you for product. And no one messaged me back. So I don't know what happened. So someone here from Malawi says, as a Malawian artist, one of my biggest frustrations is people not willing to work outside of the box. He says people are not thinking outside the box. You about that and say quickly, COVID-19 has put all of us outside the box. So I think your, your wish has been granted. <laughs> COVID, no one is in the box right now. Every one of us is creating outside the box. Look, Lynn, I mean, we could chat all night, but I want to know, what is your hope for Africa? What is your hope for, for fashion in Malawi? And what are you going to do to cultivate into this hope that you have for Malawi and for Africa? I want us to work together. I want us to trust each other because I feel like sometimes maybe we don't trust each other. I want us to trust each other. I want us to introduce each other, you know? Hi, my name is, let's get to know each other and build those relationships. Because I feel like when you do that, that's when we can work together. So uh, that, that's my hope for Africa. Yeah. And my hope also, like you've watched the whole Tongoro thing. She is building a whole entire She's girl, <laughs> that girl, that that woman, I, I, I mean, that woman, she has built a whole value chain. I mean, I, I don't even want to spoil it for people who haven't watched it, because I think they need to watch it. But I want to pursue this line of thinking that you've come to. You're talking about networking, the power of networks, and what they can do if we cultivate and invest in networks in Africa. And Absolutely. I completely agree. I completely agree because I'm on this phone call, and when I started the chat series, I've been planning to have a talk show for the last two years. And unfortunately, the, the budget just wasn't coming together. And, you know, when COVID hit, I was like, you know what? You only get one shot at this. I am just going to go and do it on Instagram because that's what my pocket can afford right now. Um, yeah. And then I, 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 I stumbled upon saying, how do I resource the networks that I've made during my travels and during the projects I've worked on to bring all these people together to talk about all these things? And voila. I have never met Lynn before, by the way, guys. I've never met her before. We met on Twitter. We had Twitter. a conversation. We and found I was common. obsessing over you a year ago. I was but, you, and this, is this is what it is about. We did not know each other. Now we know each other. This is how you network. You cannot continue to network within the same circle. That's not networking. That's friendships. And that's clicks right what do you think about that i just think that fashion is a vehicle for change we can ah. do so much honest to god like like you're saying about like tungoro they've done so much the employing people they're making so much money over there and i yeah. feel like with malawi i don't want to complain because that's not yeah. what i'm going to do you know i'm a powerful woman oh. <laughs> but, but like <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you I, are. I feel like we need to speak to each other, have the conversations, have the hellos, and have the introductions, and do that. It's so important. And say, guys, how can we do this? Mzuzu Fashion Week has been great for me. Like, I try and help them where I can, and I feel like we just need to do that and speak to you. You're so amazing. Can I tell you something, though? I'm so... So, so, like, proud of what you're doing. You know Aww. what I mean? Sister. No, can I tell you something? Like, Please. I feel like 
Malawi is overlooked and for the fact that you have like brought your initiative and brought Malawi on board like I could cry like for me it makes me feel so happy that you even thought about us like I'm so whew, like thank you thank you for bringing me and Zani on thank you for bringing me and Zani on because you could have gone to Ghana, you could have gone to Senegal, you could have gone to Cameroon, but you went to Malawi. So thank you. We're not, Lynn, we're not going to do this because I have tears in my eyes now. Don't uh, cry. I, I can't help it. My, my yeah. passion for Africa and for change and all things sustainable is actually deep rooted. It's not a facade. It's not an act. It's not. Um, it's not. And I, I pray and hope that... Um, God may continue to light to guide my path so I can continue to do what I was born to do, which is to bring light to Africa. So I don't take this job lightly. Um, and but I don't we... take compliments like this lightly. So sister, thank you. Thank you nah, so much. We are grateful. I love you all the way to the bank. And we're gonna I do love this. you. And Malawi and loves you as well. It. So tell me, Malawi sister. Malawi loves in... you. In closing, in closing, what is the hope for us? One sentence. What is the hope for Africa? Hope is that we work together. Designers, photographers, bloggers, designers, we work together. Because I have, you might not have, why you have, I might not have. Let's come together. There's so many eagles go aside. Hello? Let's work together. We're talented. Like Zani said, we have. So I think we're about to lose Lynn again. Um, probably network issues. But um, guys, um, her parting words were, we need to work together. We need to drop our egos. We need to find common ground and we need to work together. I don't know if there's any other way to do this. So this is Chenesai Chat. I am signing out with such joy.